e uh, plant physiolo physiology now that we have spoke about the basic um, gen general of, um, you know steps of um, osmosis cell structure cell division why it divides and the channels you know, all of that and, and cell signal one of the most important uh, uh, element in uh, in plants and by bio, bio, botanical studies is that plants are so beautiful because they have uh, different species, different colors, different expression, depending on the concentration of whatever um, pigment. The most common is chlorophyll. That is the one that gives the color green. But we also have chlorophyll in different um, uh, categories. Some, uh, like B, that gives um, uh, red, uh, red algae the, um, a different color. The red algae, they have chlorophyll A, for instance. And uh, chlorophyll is important uh, because it's, uh, con it's containing chloroplast, as we saw earlier, into the cell, and intercepts lights, um, which is the um, fuel of photosynthesis. Some uh, have carotenoids, and, uh, and those plants, like carrots, are perfect for uh, for high science improvement, anti antioxia, uh, antioxidants. Then we have antocyanins, uh, the blue color, and, and obviously the gradients depends on the pH. Then we have beta lines, um, water soluble colors, deep uh, responsible for deep red. A lot of uh, say a lot of uh, physiologists uh, think that it might be a fancy cidal, um, uh type of uh, um, pigment in the sense that they, it's promoting the the suppression of fungi and and other par parasites so that they can probably feast on the plant Plants, apart from pigments, that also gives them appeal for um, different animals that they can help them to procreate by the means of fertilization. Because if the more colorful they are, the more they will attract an animal and a potential carrier of their seed. Another important factor is that the plants have hormones. Some hormones they um, uh, they promote growth of the cell, uh, like the pito hormones. Uh, then you also have the ABA, uh, that is for development process, uh, or like like seed and bud dormancy. And uh, they also control the organ size, the stoma, tal closure, as we saw earlier in the chemical um, uh, diagram of which ions and which compounds they promote which um, um, phenomena in the plants. <clears throat> So hormones, they are very important because they help the plant to respond to different um, um, external uh, factors like um, environment, uh, the, the soil, uh, the temperature, either if it's too cold, too hot, um, if there, there are too many metals in the, in the soil. And then um, we also have uh, other uh, hormones like the gibel, giber. Uh, we also have other hormones, giberellin, the relins. They are hormones that regulate uh, stem elongation, germination, dormancy, flowering, flower development, and uh, leaf and fruit senescence, which I think is beautiful. 
obviously cytokines um, as the word can uh, probably give you a clue promote cell division which is so important that you have an efficient cell division with an equal amount of uh, DNA cytoplasm organelles and all of that for two perfect functioning cells that will then multiply into many more to replenish the uh, old one or repair others. Uh, they are involved in cell growth, differentiation, but also apical dominance, axillary bud growth, and leaf senescence. So light not only is important for plants uh, because it, it regulates photosynthesis, but it also regulates photomorphogenesis, that is the control and development of the plant itself. And the, the photoreceptors, that they are normally found either on the cell membrane towards the outside or inside the cell membrane, if it's an internal signal, uh, they specify depending on a specific pigment. So imagine you have uh, a pigment and pigments are made of specific ions. So uh, a specific chemical compound that maybe is red then attaches to a red susceptible photoreceptor. Then the light uh, starts basically a signaling process and then by the time uh, this molecule is attached to the receptor, then it sends an internal cell signal to them, um, then start um, a chemical process for, um, for, <laughs> for instance, uh, as absorbing the, the light wave for which the uh, photoreceptor was uh, programmed for. So a red photoreceptor will not be susceptible to uh, to ions who, when absorbed, uh, are um, are producing blue uh, blue color, and so on. So that allows the the cell to be more efficient because each photoreceptor, if it's uh, more susceptible to one color instead of the other, you might have different results. So I think is um, very interesting. So photosynthesis, since we were talking about this so much, photosynthesis, you have uh, especially uh, the, con the um, <clears throat> you, you normally see it in, um, in comparison with the cellular respiration because uh, in the chloroplast, uh, they're taking in CO2 and water, and then they are producing oxygen and sugars. And uh, this is because the sun, when he hits, hits the, the, the leaf, inside the leaf, obviously, you have cells when who also have uh, chloroplasts, and inside chloroplasts, they have chlorophyll. And uh, this wave, obviously, is sending a signal into the cell, and then this, is, this signal is um, uh, susceptible to chlorophyll, and uh, the, 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 the plant is absorbing water from the soil and uh, uh, absorbing carbon dioxide and then expelling oxygen. The plants have uh, a very outstanding anatomy and physiology, as we could see, is very complex. In, a, in, in just thinking about something like um, a pot plant, all of these mechanisms are happening just now. Replication, uh, cellular growth, then it goes into uh, cellular uh, division. It, it, it's just amazing, you know, how it goes that you have. Uh, but most of the time, the cell is occupied in interface. It's like um, growing, then replicating, and then goes into mitosis. And then mitosis is divided in all of those um, mechanisms that we saw earlier. 
And all of those things are important because they are at the base of anatomy and then of physiology. Because, of course, anatomy, you're looking at the structures. Physiology, you're looking at how these structures are behaving. Um, in, and then by biology, you're looking at the molecular level of what ions are coming in and going out and what are the results. In chemistry, you are studying different chemical compounds in relation to the environment. So if you're combining all of these, you are then studying uh, <laughs> plant medicine in a way. You're like, you are like a plant doctor. You know, it's uh, just amazing. So, like, um, like um, any uh, other living organism, a plant has dermal tissue, which is the outer uh, sphere that is covering the inner part. Is those are the leaves or the anything that is external to it, even the the the, uh, the stem and everything else. The ground tissues is the inside, and the, is, is if you think about the skin, you have uh, epidermis, uh, dermis, um, and and the, and then the endo, the, the the most inner part. You have um, that part, uh, and the ground system it carries out the photosynthesis because though that is where you have the the concentration of um, plant cells with chloroplast. Then in the most inner part, you have the vascular tissue where you have these conductors of water and solids throughout the plant. The same thing that you will see in a human. You have the, uh, the, the skin, then you have the inner tissues like uh, like fat, the muscles, the bone, and then you have the vascular uh, tissues, of course, that is providing uh, nourishment to the to everything, to your muscles, to your bone, and <clears throat> and also for exchange exchanging the oxygen, you know, and with the carbon dioxide if you're transporting those molecules in order to be expelled and to also go back into um, the, the tissue in the case of oxygen um, for a more status. And those separations are both in the leaf, the stem and the root. In the root you have the high concentration of vascular at the, at the deepest part while with the uh, with the others they're more uh, they're more spread uh, towards the towards the surface at the root is really really thick uh, the vascular system because it is the is the place where you are uh, taking the most um, nutrients and water and then the more you go at the top the more it's filtering the system, so it's more selective of what is going up. Plus, is also if you think about gravity, if you want to apply that law, you are going against the gradient, so it's more pressure. So you need um, smaller capillaries, so smaller uh, vascular system to then drive up. Um, so, <clears throat> so if gravity is applied to real real things and in, in real life i believe it but this whole thing that we are our bodies attached to the ground so we don't fly out in space no that is some some crazy stuff then the plant like any living thing has organs it has organs because it's a functional um uh, functional uh, or, or, um, or, or creature, organic, uh, organic being, you know, being, and each organ has its own function depending on the position. Uh, and normally, the core is where you have the most delicate uh, parts because you have the vascular system is one of the most crucial. Then of course the dermis, if it's damaged, then 
it's, it's very difficult to save the plant. So you can have a structural issue from the inside or the outside uh, penetrating the inside, so both ways. And uh, the most uh, common, uh, common way to divide a plant is definitely the stem, the roots, and the leaves. <clears throat> and as we mentioned earlier, yeah, the water is pulled and then goes up into what? The xylem uh, from the roots. And they're replaced uh, in, from the inner cells and then the water leaves through the stoma and then evaporates and then you uh, continue the cycle. Uh, through the basically, it's very simple but yet effective. So because the plant is an organical, uh, organical um, is composed is organic and is composed of cells, and we saw it has a vascular system with organs, functioning organs. Uh, like the cord, like the epidermis, um, the ground, the vascular system, the cortex, the xylem. <clears throat> then, within that vascular system, you have you have fluid. Most commonly, uh, the 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 trees are known to have sap. That is this substance uh, composed of um, primarily um, sugars as well as water and other minerals. And um, it maintains homeostasis by constant flow, so it keeps the, the vascular system pressure uh, um, stable and it keeps the, the leaves turgid because of the constant flow of uh, fluid, water, and uh, sugars. And the uh, fun fact is that a lot, uh, a lot of this fat, of this sap, it's uh, it's even sold in supermarket in in the in the in the packages of uh, maple syrup. So think about maple syrup you are actually consuming. When you're eating cakes and pancakes, the the, the blood of uh, of the trees, while re resin is the most light, mostly found into um, specific trees, especially pine trees, and is um, very sticky, and um, it is normally trapping insects in um, inside to avoid the insects or other pathogens to enter uh, the or if they are entered already to be expelled and then to um, to protect the tree the difference between the sap is the, and the resin is very important because sap if it's more like the blood of the tree the resin instead has both qualities of blood but also of lymph of lymph of the lymphatic system because if we think about the lymphatic system the lymphatic system is known to um, basically be the the the, um, the warehouse of uh, and of basically um, the immune system. You have these little soldiers who are who are replicated and built in the lymphatic system to protect the body from pathogens. So the resins has that same goal but at the same time because it's trapping trapping and enclosing animals and also uh, closing wounds of the tree it's like uh, the platelets of the blood if you think about that so the resin is complex because it has lymphatic system properties and also blood properties as well because not even to forget that in the blood you have a white um, blood cells who are uh, part of the immune system anyways in in, uh, in in human cells at least 
And a fun fact about the raisin is that when it hardens, it's especially, especially uh, precious and expensive because we know it as amber, and it's uh, especially <laughs> loved by paleontologists because it's um, trapping a lot of uh, prehistorical or very ancient in in insects or small animals inside. We can go into plant reproduction, which was uh, shortly touched when we um, when we basically spoke about mitosis, um, because in uh, plant reproduction you also have meiosis, because you are mm, you are then uh, basically fusing two different gametes. And to do that, you need to enter my, uh, meiosis first because before you go into mitosis to make sure that you don't have too much DNA and you are creating uh, uh, an haploid cell. Yeah. Well, if you are making a normal mitosis, is a um, diploid. So... In uh, plant reproduction, you have sexual reproduction and then asexual reproduction. And sexual reproduction, you have the fusion of gametes. In asexual reproduction, it's a new individual without fusion of gametes at all. Let's talk about the asexual reproduction first. They have budding fragments, etc. Let's think about, for instance, bulbs. Bulbs like conio, potatoes, they don't require sexual reproduction. Fragmentation instead is like cutting a small uh, section of the plant or a, or a branch and then replanting it and it's going to be identical to the, um, to the, uh, to the original plant. Binary fission is what we know, especially in bacteria. That it's uh, <laughs> it's a, it's basically creating an identical cell to itself. And then, when we look at sexual reproduction of uh, plants, we think especially about pollination. Pollination made by different uh, ways. Uh, most common is insects like bees, who they go from one flower to the uh, the next. They take the nectar to then produce honey in exchange by going to different flowers. They um, they are fertilizing the the flower by by transporting unknowingly the seed from one flower to the next. But there is also unisexual um, um, uh, fertilization where this happens within the same flower. So it doesn't happen in between two different flowers, but it's just the same flower who has uh, uh, receives um, its own um, seed and goes into uh, the the ovum and fertilizing it. Uh, bisexual flower instead is used again. You have a bee that goes from one flower to the next and then is um, fertilizing uh, the ovum with uh, a, third, a, th a second party flower uh, seed. And we see here on this schema, this graphic, sorry, how the cycle of um, reproduction works that you have. Um, from um, the fertilization, you have the gamete, and then you have the fetus, and then from the fetus, the, the, uh, the seed will then flourish into um, a flower itself or into, or into a fruit. Let's talk about plant medicine. Plant medicine in the sense of how to cure plants if they are under stress or if they have been attacked or parasite or if they have um, if they have been damaged by 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 chemicals or uh, radiation or um, 
different or even mechanical um, um, damage like somebody who has damaged a plant mechanically by just ripping uh, leaves for instance so as we can see the plants can be can be subject to many certain environmental changes or attacks by bacteria pathogens insects or being parasites by another plant or uh, being exposed to radiation chemicals agents who can damage the outer surface the, of the plant or poison the plant at the core and um, and then corrupt the visceral uh, um, structure of the plant which means the vascular system that then will uh, impact the, the overall plant so if you have a leaf pathogen, most likely it's going to damage the outer surface, but then it can go in deeper and deeper if, if, go, if it goes unnoticed and if the plant is not uh, responding um, fast enough or effective enough to then um, uh, destroy the pathogen or um, making the leaf fall off and in a way saving the rest of the plant by just simply giving up on, on a, a branch or a leaf. The same thing that would happen with chemicals, if it's absorbing a high concentration of chemicals or poison, then this will be irrigated into the rest of the plant. So then the plant needs to detox from it and uh, there are mechanisms to do so. So it's very important that the infections or any sort of external or internal issues are dealt uh, from the plant uh, uh, very, f very fast. So um, the very most important thing for sure for plants is water. That's why I put a drip, a drip uh, system here. They're very useful, especially for people who don't know how much water he needs to be uh, put into the pot and also the frequency. So you just buy these bags and they do it for you. And uh, the water is so important because it regulates the uh, plant's homeostasis. And there are, of course, specific uh, enzymes and hormones that they as uh, they help the plant to either open or close stoma that, so that the plant can uh, stay hydrated. Here we see um, a nice um, booklet that I made <laughs> online uh, of the most um, notorious plants used by the Watusi to cure themselves from diseases, especially like infections, uh, vi no, more, no more viral, but more bacterial infections. And the Abasobe were the clan of the priesthood, like the Levites of the Watusi, who were the erudits, who were mostly taking care of this, um, of these studies of botanics. La, the plant Marcamia lutea, also known as Musave, is for kidney diseases. Uh, Wamboba is uh, the uh, coniza. Uh, Equiptiaca is um, normally for intestinal worms. Edoma is a uh, is Vernonia miobicola and is for pneumonia and chest infections. Tembergia alata, it's for relief of pain, especially in childbirth. Igitabitabi treats um, skin diseases, rashes, burns, also from uh, uh, fire burn. 
Igishi kashike is um, uh, used for intestinal worms or diarrhea. Diarrhea. Then you have isinununu, and it's um, called and it's um, used to um, cure or alleviate the symptoms of cold, and is also used as a dressing for wounds, open wounds. So basically, gives uh, has uh, properties of um, um, anti-inflammation. Um, like we think about tachypirina, which is a um, medication for um, uh, uh, basically decrease the temperature of fever in humans. Pirina is, comes from Greek, uh, piria with fire. So you are reducing the fire because every time there is a infection, the mechanism of plants, animals, and humans, is to increase temperature to then uh, give a signal uh, to uh, s uh, to basically increase, uh, as I mentioned, the little soldiers in your immune system. Because uh, temperature is a trigger point. Because in, in chemistry, we know combustion, every time you have a heat, you can a change state of uh, of chemical uh, compounds, but you can also um, increase reaction uh, without increasing energy because you have an external power source. So you are increasing energy, but without changing the en the energy level of the molecules themselves. And in in this way, this mechanism is uh, very uh, energetic efficient. However, long-term uh, heat can cause cellular degradation. So it means the body is, is inescating this mechanism of, of increasing temperature to increasing then uh, 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 basically a reaction, chemical reaction uh, for uh, basically um, uh, Exciting molecules to to replicate and to make more uh, more enzymes, but at the same time, this is not long term effective. It can only be used for so long. Otherwise, you have a, a counter effective, uh, and this can also cause more damage than benefit. But in short term, absolutely great mechanism. Then we have umubimbimba furo. It's used for constipation. Umbirizi, used to treat malaria. Umsanza, is to treat diarrhea. Umhanga, is to treat sore throat. Umsororo, is to treat colic and skin uh, itching as well. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much for staying with me on this uh, long journey of uh, plants in the Bible in, in, as part of our, uh, I believe, se segment of biblical science. And so we saw how complex uh, plants are, both in the macro so we see that the, they have leaves, stems, roots, and also in the micro. Even at the cellular, molecular level, they're so complex. And we haven't even dived into all the important aspects of the chemistry and biology. We just had given just a very brief uh, overview because we will dive into more specifics when we talk about animal cells and then we, when we progress to uh, the human because it's at the image of Yao. Yeah. So obviously that is going to be even more complex and dense. And I hope you have now changed your mind that you no longer believe in the evolution because all of these even small details you can see there is a uh, precise uh, design uh, behind it and that we need to thank Yahuwah for it.
Uh, so I'll see you then next time uh, for another episode. We'll look into animal sales. We'll talk about also other subjects because I don't want to neglect other areas of my interest, like history. I, I swear I will go back to also the historical uh, part of this project. Do not worry. Uh, thank you so much once again, and, and I'll see you then next time. So tap the bell to get notified. Subscribe, share if you care, and bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.